So there are a few more things I'd like to mention about bifurcations. First, I should briefly mention that bifurcations are a topic that are covered pretty extensively, much more extensively than I have here, in most mathematical courses on dynamical systems, especially those that focus on differential equations. And the conclusions or realizations that emerge from this body of work are that there's only um, a small set, uh, 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 just a handful of different types of bifurcations. So you might think, well, there's so many different differential equations that each one might have a different type of bifurcation. And that turns out to not be the case, that there's just a small set. You can classify them in, in a very precise and analytic way what these different types are. And surprisingly, to me at least, this classification holds, um, by and large, it gets a little more complicated, but it holds in higher dimensions as well. So there's a really nice um, theory behind um, a lot of this empirical stuff I've been presenting on bifurcations. It's beyond the scope of this course, but I can point you to some references um, if you'd like to dig into this further. The second point that I want to raise is to just underscore the basic phenomena of bifurcations, which is that you can have a very large change in equilibrium behavior associated with a tiny change in a system parameter. Now, bifurcations don't occur all the time. Most of the time, in, in these differential equations, you change your parameter and the system changes just a little bit. A small change in one thing gives rise to a small change in another. But every now and again, if you're at or near one of these bifurcations, you can make a small change in the parameter and this time it'll make a, a huge change in the, the system behavior. In the case of the logistic equation with harvest, once you go past that critical harvest point, it's, it's disaster for the fisheries. The equilibrium point that, that existed just disappears. So it might be worth thinking about this um, in a somewhat inverted way. So starting not with equations, but starting with observations. So suppose we're monitoring uh, some, some fishery and we notice that the, you know, we change the harvest rate um, every now and again, or we just notice that sometimes the, the fisher folk cast, catch more, sometimes less. And then all of a sudden, one day or one year, the population just disappears. And we might wonder, well, what happened? What did that? And it might be natural to look for some outside source, um, over pollution or pollution or some horrible fish disease. I don't, I don't know enough about fish to know what an outside source would be. But um, if we see some sudden collapse, some sudden change in a system, we might think that there must be something external that caused that. And that could be the case. But what the phenomena of bifurcations shows is that you can also have sudden changes that arise not from an external source, but from the intrinsic dynamics of the system. So these sudden changes, uh, you don't need to appeal to something outside. They can be, uh, uh, the cause can be internal. And that's very similar to one of the realizations um, from the butterfly effect and chaos from the last unit. If you see a population behaving erratically, that's not evidence that it is um, not following a rule. It's not evidence that there's some external source that's making that behavior appear random or be random. You can have internal or intrinsic sources of randomness in a simple model, just like you can have uh, jumps or sudden transitions be intrinsic to a simple model. Another point I want to make is that bifurcations don't have to be bad things. I've been presenting them as bad things because, well, in the logistic model with harvest, um, they are kind of a bad thing. We have a fish population that's kind of doing all right and then just disappears. So that's bad news for the fish and bad news for people that like fish. Um, but I could also imagine cases where bifurcations are not catastrophic or bad news. Um, Bifurcations let one sort of shift between two different types of behavior or two different regimes, and that could be a useful thing for a, um, an organism in, in some settings. And just in general, bifurcation doesn't automatically mean something that's catastrophically terrible or bad. Okay, the, um, the last point that I want to make is to think about what the phenomena of bifurcations might have to tell us about the study of complex systems. So by complex systems in this context, I'm thinking of a situation where we're concerned with not just one species of fish, 
but many, many species of fish. And these species of fish might interact. Some help each other out, some are antagonistic. And we'll need to think about what fish eat. A algae or sometimes other fish or fish, I don't know what fish eat, but we'll need to think about what fish eat. And then we'll need to think about the fisher folk and what they prefer to harvest and maybe markets and what types of fish people want to eat and so on. And the point is, there's a lot of things going on, a lot of variables, things we want to keep track of, and they're all interacting with each other. One thing will influence another and vice versa. So, okay, for the simple logistic equation with harvest of this unit, we've seen that we can get these sudden changes, these, these jumps, these gaps in behavior. Would we expect to see that in a complex system that was built up of many, many logistic equation-like things? There, I think the answer to this question is not so clear, and it gets to maybe the heart of what is different um, and interesting about uh, complex systems. So one could think, well, all right, if simple equations, one-dimensional equations, have these jumps in them, you put a whole bunch of those equations together and kind of tie them together with interactions, then probably the whole system would have jumps in it. Could happen. Or perhaps when we put all these equations together and tie them together, um, make them interrelated, maybe that interrelation and the diversity of interactions actually serves to stabilize things, and so we tend to not see these jumps. I don't know that either of those scenarios is generically true. I think in some settings um, we might still see jumps, and in other settings we might not. So I think that's sort of an open area in the study of complex systems. We have these generic properties for simple systems, to what extent do they carry over in the, um, when we study more complex systems?